The massive lecture hall fell into an eerie silence as Professor Zixklar materialized before the holographic display. His stealth armor shimmered, revealing iridescent scales that caught the ambient light. The Chlorian's multifaceted eyes scanned the diverse array of alien species seated before him, his voice a low hiss as he addressed the class. Settle down, cadets. Today's lesson on galactic espionage and disruption focuses on a single species, humans. A ripple of surprise coursed through the audience. It was unprecedented to devote an entire segment to one species, given the vast number of civilizations within the Interstellar Union. The recent formation of the Human Alliance had only complicated matters further. I know it's unusual, Zixkler continued, but the humans pose a unique challenge in our field. I've personally conducted operations against numerous species, some of which you won't learn about until much later in your careers. However, humans require special consideration. As Zixklar spoke, a small group of human exchange students in the back row shifted uncomfortably. The professor's gaze lingered on them for a moment before he continued. The primary objective for any infiltrator inside an enemy base is typically to destroy vital assets. But with humans, our priority shifts. Can anyone guess what it might be? A young Avon, usually at the top of the class, confidently raised a wing. To steal, sir. Correct, Zixklar hissed approvingly. But why? Let's examine the typical reaction to destruction versus the human response to theft. The professor's claws tapped on the holographic interface, bringing up a series of diagrams. When faced with destruction, most species mourn their losses, schedule replacements, and implement new security measures. Humans, however, have a peculiar tendency to view such acts as challenges. He recounted a mission where his team had managed to steal a human frigate by convincing its AI that it would be in the universe's best interest. Upon capture during a separate mission, my colleague was treated like a high-ranking officer. The humans even gave him a nickname, the Nevada Napper, and now he tours with the ship's captain recounting the tale for their amusement. The class erupted into murmurs of disbelief, with the human students nodding and chuckling amongst themselves. Zix Klar continued, delving into the intricacies of human psychology and their responses to theft. He explained how stealing seemingly insignificant items could cause more disruption than destroying major assets. To illustrate his point, he produced three objects from his case, a hollow metal cylinder, a metal rod, and a long wire. These three items, he said, holding them up for the class to see, caused more chaos in a human outpost than a full-scale assault might have. The human students in the back row suddenly perked up, recognition dawning on their faces. One of them whispered, Oh man, that's a 10 millimeter socket. And is that an old mil-spec charging cable? Zixklar nodded, a sly grin spreading across his scaled features. Indeed, let me explain the impact of each theft. He held up the metal rod first. This is a human writing implement called a pen. I stole it from an officer who spent two days searching for it, refusing to sign any documents until a replacement was delivered. This single act reduced the base's efficiency by 10% for those two days. Next, he displayed the wire. This charging cable's theft led to a chain reaction of borrowing and accusations among the human command staff. It took three days to resolve, reducing overall efficiency by 9%. Finally, he held up the socket. This adapter for their repair tools caused the most disruption. Its disappearance led to a 20% reduction in vehicle repair efficiency, sparked two physical altercations, and resulted in a 5% decrease in overall base productivity. The fascinating part, there was a box of replacements in plain sight, but the humans were too focused on blaming each other to notice. The non-human students stared at their human counterparts in bewilderment, while the humans tried to shrink into their seats, clearly embarrassed by this revelation of their species. Quirks, Zixklar's voice took on a more serious tone. Let this serve as both a lesson and a warning. If humans react so strongly to misplacing their possessions, imagine the lengths they'll go to when they discover an actual infiltrator in their midst. As the professor concluded his introduction, the implications of his words hung heavy in the air. 
The students realized they were about to embark on a journey into the complex and often perplexing world of human psychology, a crucial skill for any aspiring galactic spy. Zix Klar's multifaceted eyes gleamed with anticipation. Now, let us delve deeper into the art of human infiltration. Our next topic, exploiting their social hierarchies and the concept they call office politics. The class leaned forward, eager to unravel the mysteries of this enigmatic species that had so quickly become a major player in the galactic stage. Little did they know that this lesson would be the first step in a series of events that would reshape the balance of power in the known universe. As Zix Klar prepared to continue his lecture, a subtle vibration in his neural implant alerted him to an urgent message from the Chlorian High Command. He suppressed a shudder of excitement. Something unprecedented was unfolding beyond the walls of this classroom, something that would put all his teachings to the test. Before we proceed, he announced, his voice carrying a hint of tension that immediately captured the attention of every being in the room. I must inform you that this class is about to become far more than a theoretical exercise. The High Command has just issued a galaxy-wide alert. It seems that a human diplomatic vessel has vanished near the contested Zeta Reticuli sector, and accusations are flying between species faster than superluminal communications can carry them. The classroom erupted into a cacophony of excited chatter and nervous whispers. Zix Klar raised all four of his upper limbs, calling for silence. Cadets, the skills you learn today may very well determine the fate of our civilizations. Pay close attention, for we are about to witness history in the making. With a flick of his wrist, Zix Klar activated the room's immersive holographic system. The lecture hall transformed into a three-dimensional star map with the disputed Zeta Reticuli sector glowing ominously at its center. As the students marveled at the display, Zix Klar knew that the real lesson was about to begin, one that would challenge everything they thought they knew about intergalactic relations and the enigmatic species called humans. As the holographic star map flickered to life, bathing the lecture hall in an ethereal glow, Professor Zix Klar's scales rippled with anticipation. The Chlorian spy-turned-educator knew that the disappearance of the human diplomatic vessel was no mere coincidence. It was an opportunity, a chance to put theory into practice and show his students the true nature of galactic espionage. Observe closely, Zix Klar hissed, his multifaceted eyes reflecting the pulsating light of the Zeta Reticuli sector. The humans call this region contested. But to understand the full scope of the situation, we must delve into the intricate web of alliances and rivalries that define our galactic neighborhood. With a series of deft gestures, the professor manipulated the holographic display, highlighting various star systems and the species that inhabited them. The Arcturian Confederation, glowing in a soft blue hue, dominated the galactic east. To the west, the crimson expanse of the Syrian hegemony loomed menacingly. Sandwiched between these two superpowers was the fledgling human alliance, a peculiar amalgamation of Earth-originated colonies and a handful of smaller alien species that had thrown their lot in with the newcomers. The disappearance of a human diplomatic vessel in this sector is akin to lighting a plasma torch in a nebula of combustible gases, Zix Klar explained. It threatens to ignite tensions that have been simmering for centuries. As if on cue, a series of urgent communications began flooding the galactic networks. The holographic display erupted with a flurry of encoded transmissions, each racing across the star map like bolts of lightning. Zixklar's implants worked furiously to decrypt and analyze the data in real time. Fascinating, he murmured, more to himself than to the class. Ah, the Arcturians are already calling for an emergency session of the Galactic Council, while the Syrians are mobilizing their border fleets, and the humans... Ah, how predictably unpredictable they are. The professor zoomed in on a small cluster of stars near the edge of human space. They've dispatched not a diplomatic envoy, not a military task force, but a lone vessel, the HSS Curiosity, a science and exploration ship, officially. It's on a mission of scientific inquiry and humanitarian aid, unofficially. 
Zixklar's mandibles clicked in what passed for a Chlorian smile. Well, that's where our expertise comes into play. A tentative appendage rose from the middle of the class. It belonged to Zorbax, a gelatinous medusan known for his keen analytical mind. Professor, the student's thoughts reverberated telepathically through the room. Why would the humans send a science vessel? Surely a military response would be more appropriate given the circumstances. Zixklar's eyes glimmered with approval. An excellent question, Zorbax. This is precisely why understanding human psychology is crucial in our line of work. Humans have a peculiar tendency to approach conflict obliquely. They often employ what they call plausible deniability, a concept that allows them to pursue aggressive actions while maintaining an outward appearance of innocence or benevolence. The professor manipulated the holographic controls once more, bringing up a detailed schematic of the HSS Curiosity. Notice the ship's design. Ostensibly, it's equipped for deep space exploration and xenobiological research. But look closer. As the class leaned in, Zixklar highlighted various sections of the ship. Reinforced hull plating, far beyond what's necessary for a science vessel. Oversized power cores that could easily support military-grade shielding. And these protrusions here and here, perfect for concealing weapon systems. A collective murmur of understanding rippled through the classroom. The human students, however, remained conspicuously silent, their expressions a mixture of discomfort and grudging admiration. But the true genius of this approach, Zixklar continued, lies not in the ship's hidden capabilities, but in the message it sends. By dispatching a science vessel, the humans are telling the galaxy, we come in peace, seeking only knowledge and understanding. Yet, they are prepared for any eventuality. It's a masterclass in strategic ambiguity. As the professor spoke, new data streams began pouring into the holographic display. Urgent communiques from various species flashed across the star map, each reacting to the human vessel's approach to the Zeta Reticuli sector. And now, Zixklar announced, his voice tinged with excitement, we witness the ripple effect. Observe how each faction responds to this seemingly innocuous move by the humans. The Arcturian Confederation, true to their diplomatic nature, issued a statement welcoming the human scientific mission and offering assistance. The Syrian hegemony, ever suspicious, began repositioning their fleets, citing routine exercises as the reason for their sudden mobilization. But pay close attention to the smaller players, Zixklar advised, zooming in on a cluster of less prominent star systems. The Rigelian Trade Consortium, the Pleiadian Collective, the Andromedan Expatriates, each of these minor powers now faces a crucial decision. Do they align with the humans, potentially gaining a powerful ally but risking the ire of the established galactic superpowers? Or do they maintain their traditional allegiances, potentially missing out on the opportunity to reshape the balance of power? As the class watched, fascinated, the holographic display became a whirlwind of diplomatic signals, covert communications, and military maneuvers. The galaxy was reacting to the human move in real time, and the complexity of the unfolding situation was breathtaking. The, this, my aspiring infiltrators, Zixklar declared, his voice filled with a mixture of admiration and caution, is the true battlefield of galactic politics not the flashy space battles depicted in human entertainment, but this intricate dance of information, misinformation, and calculated risks. The professor paused, allowing the gravity of the situation to sink in. Then, with a sly glint in his multifaceted eyes, he posed a question to the class. Now, given what we've observed, what would be your next move if you were tasked with infiltrating the HSS Curiosity? The silence that followed was electric. Students of various species contemplated the challenge, their minds racing to apply the lessons they'd learned about human psychology and galactic politics to this real-world scenario. Finally, a voice spoke up from the back of the room. It belonged to one of the human exchange students, a young woman with a determined set to her jaw. Professor, she said, her voice steady despite the tension in the room. I believe I have a suggestion. Zixklar's mandibles clicked in surprise. Indeed? Well, this should be illuminating. 
Please, enlighten us with the human perspective on this delicate situation. The human student stood, her eyes scanning the room before settling on the holographic display of the HSS Curiosity. The key, she began, lies not in the ship itself, but in its crew. Human vessels, especially those on sensitive missions, often carry a diverse range of specialists. Each of these individuals would have undergone rigorous security screenings, making direct infiltration extremely difficult. She paused, gauging the reaction of her alien classmates before continuing. However, humans have a weakness, our innate curiosity and our desire to understand the unknown. I propose a strategy that exploits this trait. Instead of attempting to place an agent on board, we could engineer a situation that compels the curiosity to investigate, drawing them into a scenario of our design. Zixkler's eyes narrowed. His interest peaked. Go on, he encouraged. We could create a false distress signal, the human student explained, her confidence growing. Something that appeals to both the scientific and humanitarian aspects of their mission, perhaps evidence of a previously unknown species facing an extinction-level event, or the discovery of ancient alien technology that's destabilizing a nearby star system. The key is to present a scenario so intriguing, so rich with potential for discovery and heroism, that the humans simply cannot resist investigating. As she spoke, the class began to nod in understanding, seeing the elegance of the proposed strategy. Zix Klar, for his part, remained silent, his alien features unreadable. Once we've drawn them in, the human continued, we can manipulate the situation to our advantage, feed them carefully crafted information, play on their empathy and their desire to be the heroes of their own story. In doing so, we can guide their actions, shape their perceptions, and ultimately influence the course of galactic events, all without ever setting foot on their ship. As she concluded, the lecture hall erupted into a buzz of excited discussion. Species from across the galaxy debated the merits of the plan, each bringing their unique perspective to bear on the problem. Zixklar raised his upper limbs for silence, his eyes fixed on the human student. A most intriguing proposal, he said, his voice a mixture of admiration and wariness. You've demonstrated a keen understanding of your own species, psychology, and how it can be leveraged in the arena of galactic politics. I must commend you, and perhaps keep a closer eye on you in the future. The human student nodded, a small smile playing at the corners of her mouth as she took her seat. The rest of the class looked at her with a new respect, suddenly aware that they were not just studying humans, but learning alongside them. As the excitement in the room began to settle, Zixklar turned back to the holographic display where the HSS Curiosity continued its journey towards the Zeta Reticuli sector. Class, he announced, his voice carrying a note of urgency. It seems our theoretical exercise has become a practical exam. The High Command has just issued new orders. We are to develop a comprehensive strategy for monitoring and potentially influencing the HSS Curiosity's mission. Your performance on this task will be noted in your permanent records. The students straightened in their seats, a mix of excitement and apprehension rippling through the room. They were no longer mere cadets studying abstract concepts. They were now active participants in a galactic drama, their actions potentially shaping the future of interstellar relations. As Zix Klar began outlining the parameters of their assignment, the holographic star map continued to pulse with activity. Somewhere out there, the HSS Curiosity was venturing into the unknown, its crew blissfully unaware that they had become the focal point of a cosmic game of chess, a game where the stakes were nothing less than the balance of power in the known universe. The lines between education and reality had blurred, and for the students in that lecture hall, the true test of their skills was about to begin. As the gravity of their new assignment settled over the classroom, Professor Zixklar's multifaceted eyes glimmered with a mixture of excitement and concern. The holographic display pulsed with an urgency that mirrored the tension in the room, each flickering light representing the myriad of potential outcomes their actions could precipitate. Cadets, Zixklar began, his voice carrying a weight that commanded absolute attention. What we are about to undertake is not merely an academic exercise. 
The strategies we develop here may very well shape the course of galactic history. I need not remind you of the delicacy of this situation, nor of the potential consequences should our involvement be discovered. The professor's gaze swept across the room, lingering for a moment on the human exchange students. We will divide into teams, each tasked with developing a comprehensive strategy for monitoring and potentially influencing the HSS Curiosity's mission. Remember, subtlety is paramount. We are not here to provoke conflict, but to guide events from the shadows. As Zixklar began assigning teams, the holographic display shifted, zooming in on the HSS Curiosity's projected flight path. The ship's trajectory took it perilously close to several contested star systems, each a potential powder keg in the delicate balance of galactic politics. Zorbax, the Medusan student, raised a gelatinous appendage. A professor, his thoughts reverberated through the room. Given the human propensity for unpredictability, how can we hope to accurately predict and influence their actions? Zixklar's mandibles clicked in what passed for a Chlorian smile. An astute observation, Zorbax. This is precisely why we must think beyond mere prediction. Our goal is to create scenarios that guide the humans towards actions that serve our interests. Regardless of the specific choices they make, the professor manipulated the holographic controls, bringing up a detailed schematic of the Zeta Reticuli sector. Consider this. Within this sector lies the remnants of an ancient civilization, one that predates even the eldest of our species. The humans, with their insatiable curiosity, will undoubtedly be drawn to investigate. Our task is to ensure that whatever they discover aligns with our galactic agenda. As the teams began to form, ideas flew back and forth across the lecture hall. The Arcturian students, with their gift for diplomacy, suggested creating a series of seemingly unrelated diplomatic incidents that would necessitate the Curiosity's involvement. The Syrian contingent, true to their militaristic nature, proposed a more direct approach involving staged pirate attacks to test the ship's true capabilities. Amidst the flurry of alien perspectives, the human exchange students found themselves in an unusual position. Their insights into their own species, psychology, were invaluable, yet they grappled with the moral implications of potentially manipulating their own kind. One of the human students, a young man named Alex, approached Zixklar with visible unease. Professor, he began hesitantly, I understand the academic value of this exercise, but I can't help feeling that we're crossing a line. These are real people we're talking about manipulating. Zixklar regarded Alex with a mixture of sympathy and academic interest. Your concern is noted, Alex, and it raises an important point. In our line of work, we often face ethical dilemmas. The question you must ask yourself is this. If your actions could prevent a greater conflict, would the ends justify the means? The professor's words hung in the air, a philosophical challenge that cut to the heart of interstellar relations. Alex nodded slowly, his brow furrowed in thought as he returned to his team. As the planning session progressed, the holographic display continued to update in real time, reflecting the ever-changing galactic landscape. Suddenly, a series of urgent alerts flashed across the star map, drawing gasps from the students. Zixklar's eyes widened as he processed the incoming data. It seems, he announced, his voice cutting through the chatter that our hypothetical scenario has taken an unexpected turn. The HSS Curiosity has altered its course. They're heading directly for the Omega Nebula, a region notorious for spatial anomalies and unexplained phenomena. The classroom erupted into a frenzy of activity. Teams scrambled to adjust their strategies, realizing that the humans had once again defied expectations. Zixaklar watched with a mixture of pride and apprehension as his students rose to the challenge, their minds working in overdrive to adapt to this new development. Professor, called out a Rigelian student, her bioluminescent patterns flashing with excitement. What if we use the nebula's properties to our advantage? We could manipulate the anomalies to create illusions, guiding the curiosity towards or away from specific discoveries. Zixklar nodded approvingly. An innovative approach. But remember, we must account for the humans' advanced sensors. 
Any manipulation must be subtle enough to evade detection. As the teams refined their strategies, a new alert flashed across the holographic display. The professor's mandibles clicked rapidly as he processed the information. Attention, class, he called out, his voice tinged with urgency. We've just received word that the Arcturian Confederation has dispatched its own research vessel to the Omega Nebula. It seems we're not the only ones interested in the Curiosity's mission. This new development sent ripples of excitement and concern through the classroom. The stakes had just been raised significantly. Not only did they need to influence the human vessel, but they now had to contend with the Arcturians as well. Sir, interjected a Syrian cadet, her metallic scales gleaming under the holographic lights. This could be an opportunity. If we can manipulate both the human and Arcturian vessels, we could orchestrate a scenario that serves our interests regardless of the outcome. Zixklar's eyes glimmered with approval. Excellent thinking. This is the kind of multidimensional strategy that separates true masters of galactic intrigue from mere operatives. Develop this idea further. As the Syrian cadet outlined her plan, involving a complex web of misinformation and carefully orchestrated coincidences, Alex, the human student, found himself drawn into the intellectual challenge despite his earlier reservations. He realized that in this realm of interstellar politics, the line between right and wrong was far blurrier than he had ever imagined. Bo, what if, Alex suggested, surprising himself with his own boldness, we use the humans' tendency for heroism against them. We could engineer a situation where the Arcturian vessel appears to be in danger. The curiosity would almost certainly move to assist, allowing us to control their interactions and the information exchange. The classroom fell silent for a moment, all eyes turning to Alex. Zixklar's mandibles clicked rapidly, a sign of intense interest. A daring proposal, Alex. It seems you've embraced the complexity of our work. But remember, with such a plan, the risks are as great as the potential rewards. One misstep could spark an interstellar incident. As the teams incorporated this new idea into their strategies, the holographic display suddenly flickered, the image of the Omega Nebula distorting momentarily. Zix Klar's eyes narrowed as he studied the readouts. Fascinating, he murmured. It appears the curiosity has activated some sort of experimental drive. They're attempting to penetrate deeper into the nebula than any ship has gone before. The implications of this development were not lost on the class. Whatever the humans discovered in the depths of the Omega Nebula could shift the balance of power in the galaxy. The race was on to influence that discovery before it was made. Professor Zorbax's thoughts resonated with a hint of alarm. Given the unpredictable nature of the nebula and this new drive technology, is there a risk that the humans might stumble upon something beyond our control? Zixklar's response was measured, but there was an unmistakable edge of excitement in his voice. Indeed, Zorbax, and therein lies both the greatest danger and the greatest opportunity. We are no longer merely reacting to events. We are on the cusp of shaping the very future of galactic exploration and politics. The professor swept his gaze across the room, taking in the determined faces of his students. This is the moment, cadets, where theory meets reality. Everything you've learned about human psychology, interspecies diplomacy, and the delicate art of manipulation will be put to the test. The actions we take in the next few hours may well determine the course of galactic history for centuries to come. As if to underscore Zixklar's words, a series of urgent alerts began flashing across the holographic display. The curiosity had reached the heart of the Omega Nebula, and strange energy readings were emanating from their location. Simultaneously, the Arcturian vessel was reporting unusual phenomena that defied explanation. The classroom buzzed with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. This was no longer an academic exercise or even a controlled field operation. They were witnessing, and potentially influencing, a pivotal moment in galactic affairs. Zixklar raised all four of his upper limbs, calling for attention. Cadets, the time for planning is over. We must act now, decisively and with precision. Each team will implement their strategy immediately. Remember, 
Our goal is not to control events directly, but to guide them subtly towards outcomes that benefit galactic stability, as we define it. As the teams sprang into action, coordinating with operatives scattered throughout the sector, Alex found himself at the heart of the operation. His understanding of human nature, combined with the alien perspectives of his classmates, was proving invaluable in anticipating and subtly redirecting the curiosity's actions. Yet, as he worked, a nagging doubt persisted in the back of his mind. Were they truly working towards galactic stability, or were they pawns in a larger game whose true nature they could scarcely comprehend? As the HSS Curiosity delved deeper into the unknown reaches of the Omega Nebula, the actions taken in that classroom would ripple across the cosmos, setting in motion events that would reshape the galaxy in ways that none of them, not even the brilliant Professor Zixklar, could fully predict. The line between education and galactic intrigue had not just blurred, it had vanished entirely. And in its place, a new reality was taking shape one where the future of entire civilizations hung in the balance, guided by the unseen hands of students who had suddenly found themselves at the center of a cosmic drama. As the classroom hummed with frantic activity, Professor Zixklar's multifaceted eyes darted between the holographic display and his students. The HSS Curiosity had penetrated deeper into the Omega Nebula than any ship before, and the energy readings emanating from its location were unlike anything the galactic community had ever encountered. Cadets, Zixklar's voice cut through the chaos, we are witnessing a pivotal moment in galactic history. Our actions in the next few hours may well determine the course of interstellar relations for millennia to come. The holographic display suddenly flared with a burst of unknown energy, causing several students to recoil. Data streams flooded the system overwhelming the classroom's advanced processors. Amidst the cascade of information, a single message from the HSS Curiosity broke through. Discovered, ancient construct, impossible geometry. Reality itself seems to bend. The fragmented transmission sent shockwaves through the room. Zixklar's mandibles clicked rapidly as he processed the implications. It appears he said, his voice eerily calm, that the humans have stumbled upon something far beyond our current understanding of the universe. Alex, the human exchange student who had been grappling with the ethical implications of their actions, felt a chill run down his spine. Professor, he called out, his voice tight with concern. If this discovery is as significant as it seems, shouldn't we be focusing on containment rather than exploitation? Zixklar turned his alien gaze upon Alex, his expression unreadable. An astute observation, Alex. Indeed, the stakes have risen beyond our initial expectations. We must now consider the possibility that this discovery could destabilize not just political alliances, but the very fabric of our reality. The professor's words hung heavy in the air, the weight of their responsibility settling upon each student's shoulders. Zixklar manipulated the holographic control, bringing up a strategic overlay of the Omega Nebula. Our priority now is twofold, he announced. I first, we must ensure that this discovery does not fall into the wrong hands, be they human, Arcturian, or any other species. Second, we must guide the flow of information in a way that promotes stability rather than chaos. As the team scrambled to adjust their strategies, the Arcturian research vessel, which had been following the curiosity, suddenly went dark. Its energy signature vanished from the holographic display, leaving only an ominous void in the swirling nebula. Zorbax, the Medusan student, projected his thoughts with an urgency that resonated through the room. Professor, the disappearance of the Arcturian vessel cannot be a coincidence. Could they have fallen victim to whatever the humans have discovered? Zixklar's eyes narrowed as he considered the possibility. A concerning development. Indeed, we must consider all scenarios, including the possibility that the Arcturians have made contact with the anomaly and are now changed in some fundamental way. The implications of this statement sent a ripple of unease through the classroom. The idea that an encounter with this unknown phenomenon could alter a species at its core added a new layer of complexity to their already daunting task. 
As the teams regrouped to address this new development, Alex found himself at the center of a heated debate. His unique perspective as a human was suddenly invaluable, yet he felt the weight of divided loyalties more keenly than ever. We need to warn them, Alex insisted, his voice tight with emotion. Whatever the curiosity has found, it's clearly dangerous. We can't just manipulate them like pawns in some cosmic chess game. A Syrian cadet, her metallic scales bristling with agitation, countered sharply. And risk exposing our involvement? The humans, discovery could shift the balance of power in the galaxy. We need to control the flow of information, not add to the chaos. As the argument escalated, Zixkler intervened, his voice cutting through the din. Both perspectives have merit he said, his tone measured. But we must think beyond the immediate crisis. Whatever the curiosity has discovered, it is now a factor in galactic politics. Our task is to ensure that its impact is controlled and, if possible, beneficial to galactic stability. The professor's words brought a momentary calm to the room, but the tension remained palpable. As the teams resumed their work, the holographic display suddenly erupted with a flurry of activity. Multiple ships from various species were converging on the Omega Nebula, drawn by the mysterious energy signatures and the sudden silence from both the human and Arcturian vessels. Zixklar's eyes widened as he processed the incoming data. It seems, he announced, his voice tinged with a mixture of excitement and apprehension, that our window for subtle manipulation has closed. We are now in the midst of a full-scale galactic incident. The classroom erupted into a frenzy of activity as students scrambled to adapt their strategies to this new reality. Alex, torn between his loyalty to his species and his newfound understanding of galactic politics, found himself proposing a bold plan. What if, uh, he began, his voice gaining strength as he spoke, we use this chaos to our advantage. Instead of trying to control the situation, we could introduce just enough misinformation to keep all parties off balance. By becoming the voice of reason amidst the confusion, we could position ourselves as the mediators of this crisis. Zixklar's mandibles clicked rapidly, a sign of intense interest. A risky strategy, Alex, but one with potential. It would require a delicate balance of truth and deception and impeccable timing. As the class debated the merits of Alex's proposal, a new transmission broke through the communications chatter. It was from the HSS Curiosity, but the voice was unlike anything they had heard before. It spoke in harmonics and frequencies that seemed to resonate with the very fabric of space-time. We have seen, beyond, the voice intoned, its words echoing strangely in the classroom. The universe is not as it seems. We are changed, evolved, transcended. The transmission cut off abruptly, leaving a stunned silence in its wake. Zixklar's entire body had gone rigid, his alien features frozen in an expression of awe and terror. A cadet's, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. We are no longer dealing with a mere political crisis or scientific discovery. It appears that the crew of the Curiosity has undergone some form of transformation. The implications of this are beyond anything we have prepared for. The gravity of the situation settled over the classroom like a heavy shroud. They were no longer playing at galactic politics. They were witnessing the birth of something entirely new, something that could reshape the very nature of existence in the known universe. Alex, his earlier ethical concerns now seeming quaint in the face of this cosmic revelation, found himself speaking up once more. Professor, he said, his voice steady despite the tremor in his hands. I think we need to shift our focus entirely. This isn't about influencing the outcome anymore. It's about preparing the galaxy for a fundamental shift in the nature of reality itself. Zixklar turned his alien gaze upon Alex, a newfound respect evident in his multifaceted eyes. You may be right, Alex, but the question remains, how does one prepare for the unknowable? As if in answer to the professor's question, the holographic display suddenly shifted showing a view of the Omega Nebula that defied comprehension. The swirling gases had taken on impossible geometries, bending light and matter in ways that shouldn't be possible. At the heart of this cosmic maelstrom, 
a shape was forming, a structure of such complexity and beauty that it brought tears to the eyes of those who beheld it. Behold, Zixklar breathed, his voice filled with a mixture of fear and wonder, the birth of a new cosmic order. The classroom fell silent as the implications of what they were witnessing sank in. They had come here to learn the art of galactic espionage, to master the subtle manipulation of interstellar politics. Instead, they found themselves at the threshold of a new era, one that would redefine the very nature of existence for all sentient beings. As the impossible structure at the heart of the Omega Nebula continued to grow and evolve, Zixklar turned to face his students. His alien features were set in an expression of determination and purpose. Cadets, he announced, his voice carrying the weight of history. Our lesson plan has been irrevocably altered. We are no longer here to learn how to manipulate galactic events. We are here to bear witness to the dawn of a new cosmic age and to help guide our respective civilizations through the tumultuous times that lie ahead. The professor's gaze swept across the room, taking in the faces of his students, human, Syrian, Arcturian, Medusan, and more. Each of them represented not just their species, but the hopes and fears of entire civilizations. The skills you have learned here will still be crucial, Zixklar continued, but they must now be applied to a higher purpose. We must become the mediators between the known and the unknowable the bridge between what was and what will be. As the students absorbed the magnitude of their new role, the holographic display continued to evolve, showing the rapid approach of ships from every major galactic power. The Omega Nebula had become the focal point of the universe, a cosmic crucible in which the fate of all sentient life would be decided. Alex, standing at the heart of this galactic maelstrom, felt a sense of purpose unlike anything he had ever experienced. He realized that the ethical dilemmas he had grappled with earlier were but a prelude to the cosmic moral quandaries that now lay before them. As the classroom transformed into an impromptu command center, coordinating with governments and institutions across the galaxy, Alex knew that they were no longer just students. They had become the vanguard of a new era, tasked with guiding the galaxy through its greatest transformation. The universe held its breath, poised on the brink of a new dawn, and in a classroom turned cosmic nexus, a group of students turned cosmic mediators prepared to face the greatest challenge of their lives and the lives of all sentient beings in the galaxy. As the classroom turned command center buzzed with frantic activity, Professor Zixklar's multifaceted eyes darted between the holographic displays, each one depicting a different facet of the unfolding cosmic drama. The impossible structure at the heart of the Omega Nebula continued to grow and evolve, its ethereal beauty belying the profound changes it heralded for the fabric of reality itself. Cadets, Zixklar's voice cut through the chaos, his tone a mixture of urgency and awe. We stand at the precipice of a new cosmic order. Our actions in these crucial moments will echo through the annals of galactic history for eons to come. Alex, the human exchange student who had become an unexpected linchpin in this interstellar crisis, stepped forward. His earlier moral qualms seemed quaint now, overshadowed by the magnitude of the situation they faced. A professor, he began, his voice steady despite the tremor in his hands, we need to establish communication protocols with the transformed crew of the Curiosity. If we can understand their new perspective, we might be able to bridge the gap between what was and what will be. Zixklar's mandibles clicked rapidly, a sign of intense approval. An excellent suggestion, Alex, but we must proceed with caution. The minds we seek to communicate with may no longer operate within the constraints of our current understanding of reality, as if in response to their discussion. The holographic display flickered, showing a new transmission from the HSS Curiosity. The image that materialized was unlike anything they had ever seen, a being of pure energy and thought, its form constantly shifting and redefining itself. We see, beyond the veil, the entity spoke, its voice a symphony of cosmic harmonies. The universe is but a canvas, reality, a brushstroke of infinite possibility. The classroom fell silent, each student grappling with the profound implications of these words. 
Zorbax, the Medusan student, was the first to break the silence, his thoughts reverberating through the room with an urgency that belied his gelatinous form. A professor, whack, if the crew of the curiosity has indeed transcended our understanding of reality, how can we hope to mediate between them and the rest of the galaxy? We risk becoming obsolete at best, or a hindrance to cosmic evolution at worst. Zix Klar's eyes narrowed as he considered this perspective. A valid concern, sore backs. But perhaps our role is not to mediate, but to translate. We must become the interpreters of the ineffable, the bridge between the finite and the infinite. As the class debated this new paradigm, the holographic displays erupted with urgent alerts. Ships from every major galactic power were now on the outskirts of the Omega Nebula, their weapons primed and tensions running high. Multiple fleet signatures detected, a Syrian cadet reported, her metallic scales reflecting the pulsing lights of the display. The Arcturian Confederation, Syrian hegemony, and by the cosmic void, even the Zeta Reticulans have sent vessels. They're forming a perimeter around the nebula. Zixklar's expression darkened. As we feared, fear of the unknown has driven them to the brink of conflict. We must act swiftly to prevent a catastrophe that could tear the galaxy apart. Alex, drawing upon his understanding of human nature and his newfound insights into galactic politics, proposed a daring plan. What if we broadcast the transformation of the Curiosity's crew to all approaching vessels, not as a threat, but as an invitation to witness the dawn of a new era? The professor's eyes glimmered with interest. A bold strategy, Alex. It could incite panic, or it could inspire awe. The question is, which reaction will prevail? As they debated the merits of this approach, a new signal cut through the cacophony of interstellar chatter. It was from the Arcturian vessel that had vanished earlier, its reappearance as sudden as its disappearance. We have glimpsed eternity. The transmission began, the once familiar Arcturian language now imbued with layers of meaning that transcended mere words. The barriers between species, between thought and reality, they are illusions. We invite you to see. The implications of this message sent shockwaves through the classroom. It was clear now that whatever transformation the human crew had undergone, it was not unique to their species. The cosmic evolution unfolding in the heart of the Omega Nebula was indiscriminate, offering its profound changes to any who encountered it. Zix Klar, his alien features set in an expression of grim determination, made a decision that would alter the course of galactic history. Cadets, we can no longer afford to be mere observers or subtle manipulators. We must take direct action to guide the galaxy through this transition. The professor's claws danced over the holographic controls, initiating a broadcast on all known frequencies and in all documented languages of the galaxy. His voice, translated and retranslated countless times, echoed across the stars. To all sentient beings of the galaxy, this is Professor Zixklar of the Intergalactic Academy of Diplomatic and Covert Operations. We stand at the threshold of a cosmic revolution, one that promises to redefine the very nature of existence. The crews of the HSS Curiosity and the Arcturian Research Vessel have undergone a transformation beyond our current understanding. But this is not a threat to be feared. It is an opportunity to be embraced. As Zixklar spoke, Alex and his fellow students worked feverishly to compile visual data, sensor readings, and the enigmatic messages from the transformed crews. These were woven into the broadcast, offering tantalizing glimpses of the new reality taking shape within the Omega Nebula. We call upon all species, all civilizations, to approach this phenomenon not with weapons primed, but with minds open, Zix Klar continued. Let us form a galactic consortium dedicated to understanding and, if we prove worthy, embracing this cosmic evolution. The choice before us is clear. We can cling to the familiar and risk stagnation, or we can step boldly into a future of infinite possibility. As the professor's words reverberated across the galaxy, the reactions were as varied as the species that received them. Some vessels immediately powered down their weapons, their crews captivated by the promise of transcendence. 
Others maintained their defensive postures, wary of what they perceived as a potential threat to their very way of life. In the heart of the Omega Nebula, the impossible structure continued to grow and evolve. It now spanned light years, its fractal patterns repeating at every scale from the subatomic to the cosmic. The transformed crews of the Curiosity and the Arcturian vessel seemed to dance among its ethereal geometries, their forms blurring the line between energy and matter, thought and reality. Back in the classroom, Alex found himself at the center of a whirlwind of activity. His unique perspective as a human, combined with the knowledge he had gained of galactic politics and alien psychology, made him an invaluable asset in interpreting the unfolding events. Professor, he called out, his eyes fixed on a particularly complex data stream. I think I'm beginning to see a pattern in the transformations. It's not just physical or mental. It's a fundamental shift in how these beings perceive and interact with the fabric of space-time itself. Zixklar moved swiftly to Alex's side, his alien eyes scanning the data with intense focus. Explain, he urged, his voice tight with anticipation. Alex's fingers flew over the holographic interface, highlighting key points in the stream of information. Look here and here, he said, pointing to seemingly random fluctuations in the energy readings. These aren't chaos. They're a new form of communication. The transformed beings are not just talking to each other. They're conversing with the universe itself. The implications of this revelation sent ripples of excitement and trepidation through the classroom. If Alex's interpretation was correct, they were witnessing the birth of a new form of consciousness, one that transcended the boundaries of individual minds and even species. As the students grappled with this paradigm-shifting concept, a new transmission cut through the galactic chatter. It came not from the transformed crews or the approaching fleets, but from deep within the heart of the impossible structure itself. The message was not in words or even in recognizable thought patterns. It was a pulse of pure meaning, bypassing language centers and speaking directly to the core of each being that received it. In that moment, every student in the classroom, every crew member on the approaching ships, and indeed, every sentient being within range of the transmission, experienced a fleeting glimpse of the cosmic truth unfolding within the Omega Nebula. For a fraction of a second that stretched into eternity, they saw the universe not as a collection of separate objects and beings, but as a single, interconnected whole. They perceived time not as a linear progression, but as a multidimensional tapestry where past, present, and future coexisted in harmony. As the vision faded, leaving behind a profound sense of awe and possibility, Zixklar turned to face his students. His alien features were set in an expression of determination and purpose unlike anything they had seen before. Cadets, he announced, his voice carrying the weight of cosmic revelation. Our mission has evolved beyond anything we could have imagined. We are no longer merely students of galactic intrigue or even mediators of a cosmic transformation. We have become the harbingers of a new age, tasked with guiding the entire galaxy perhaps the entire universe, through its greatest evolution. The professor's gaze swept across the room, taking in the faces of his students, human, Syrian, Arcturian, Medusan, and more. Each of them had been forever changed by what they had witnessed. Their perspectives broadened beyond the limits of their individual species. The skills you have learned here, the art of diplomacy, the science of manipulation, the intricacies of interspecies psychology, will be more crucial now than ever before, Zixklar continued. The, but they must be applied not for the benefit of any one species or faction, but for the harmonious evolution of all sentient life. As the students absorbed the magnitude of their new role, the holographic displays continued to evolve, showing the gradual shift in the posture of the approaching fleets. Weapons were powering down, shields were being lowered, and communication channels were opening up across species lines. Alex, standing at the heart of this cosmic nexus, felt a sense of purpose that transcended his individual identity. He realized that the ethical dilemmas and divided loyalties he had grappled with earlier were but the first steps on a path that led to a profound understanding of the interconnectedness of all things.
As the classroom transformed once again, this time into a hub for coordinating the galaxy's approach to the cosmic phenomenon, Alex knew that they were no longer just students, or even cosmic mediators. They had become the midwives of universal consciousness, tasked with ushering in an era of existence beyond anything conceived in the long history of the cosmos. The universe held its breath, poised on the brink of an evolution that would redefine the very nature of reality. And in a classroom turned cosmic crucible, a group of students turned cosmic guardians prepared to guide all of creation through the birth pangs of a new universal order. As the cosmic drama unfolded, the classroom turned galactic hub pulsed with an energy that transcended the physical realm. Professor Zixklar, his multifaceted eyes reflecting the swirling patterns of the Omega Nebula, addressed his students with a gravity that belied the momentous nature of their task. Cadets, he began, his voice resonating with newfound depths. We stand at the cusp of universal transformation. Our actions now will echo through the corridors of time and space, shaping the very fabric of reality itself. Alex, the human student who had become an unexpected linchpin in this cosmic revolution, stepped forward. His earlier uncertainties had been replaced by a profound sense of purpose. Professor, he said, his voice steady and clear, I believe we need to establish a galactic consortium immediately, not just for study or containment, but for active participation in this evolution. We must invite representatives from every spacefaring species to witness and engage with the phenomenon directly. Zixklar's mandibles clicked rapidly in approval. An excellent proposal. Alex, but we must proceed with caution. Not all beings may be ready for such a profound shift in consciousness. As if in response to their discussion, the impossible structure at the heart of the Omega Nebula pulsed with renewed intensity. The transformed crews of the Curiosity and the Arcturian vessel, now beings of pure energy and thought, began to weave complex patterns through the ethereal construct. Zorbax, the Medusan student, projected his thoughts with an urgency that resonated through the room. Professor, I believe I'm detecting a pattern in their movements. It's as if they're creating a language, a way of communicating that transcends traditional barriers. Zixklar moved swiftly to the holographic display, his alien eyes scanning the data with intense focus. You may be right, Zorbax. This could be the key to bridging the gap between our current state of existence and the cosmic consciousness that awaits us. As the class worked feverishly to decipher this new form of communication, urgent alerts flooded the system. The fleets surrounding the Omega Nebula were reporting strange phenomena. Crew members across various ships were experiencing spontaneous moments of expanded consciousness, glimpsing the interconnected nature of the universe. Ooh, it's spreading, a Syrian cadet reported, her metallic scales shimmering with excitement. The transformation, it's no longer confined to those who directly encounter the structure. It's propagating through space itself. The implications of this development were staggering. What had begun as a localized phenomenon was rapidly becoming a galaxy-wide event. The cosmic evolution was accelerating, pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible. Alex, drawing upon his understanding of human nature and his newfound cosmic awareness, proposed a daring plan. We need to broadcast these experiences, he said, his eyes alight with purpose. Not just the data, but the felt sense of interconnectedness. If we can share these moments of expanded consciousness with the entire galaxy, we might be able to guide this evolution in a harmonious direction. Zixklar considered the proposal for a moment, his alien features set in deep contemplation. A bold strategy, Alex, but one that carries great risk. We would be fundamentally altering the consciousness of trillions of beings. The ethical implications are profound. As the class debated the merits and risks of this approach, a new transmission cut through the galactic chatter. It emanated from the heart of the impossible structure. But unlike previous communications, this one was clear and comprehensible to all who received it. Children of the cosmos, the message began, its words carrying the weight of universal truth. You stand at the threshold of a grand awakening. The barriers between individual consciousness and universal mind are dissolving. 
you are invited to participate in the birth of a new reality, where the distinction between observer and observed, creator and created, ceases to exist. The classroom fell silent as the magnitude of this invitation sank in. They were being offered a chance to participate in the conscious evolution of the universe itself. Zix Klar, his alien features set in an expression of profound determination, made a decision that would alter the course of cosmic history. Cadets, he announced, his voice carrying the certainty of one who has glimpsed the ultimate truth. We can no longer think in terms of galactic politics or even species-wide concerns. We must now act as stewards of universal consciousness. The professor's claws danced over the holographic controls, initiating a broadcast that would reach every corner of the known universe. His voice, imbued with the resonance of cosmic awakening, echoed across the vastness of space. To all sentient beings, to all forms of consciousness throughout the cosmos, this is Professor Zixklar of the Intergalactic Academy of Diplomatic and Covert Operations. We stand at the dawn of a new era of existence. The transformation that began in the Omega Nebula is not a phenomenon to be observed from afar, but an invitation to participate in the conscious evolution of reality itself. As Zix Klar spoke, Alex and his fellow students worked in perfect harmony, their individual skills and perspectives blending into a unified effort. They compiled the experiences of those who had glimpsed the greater truth, translating ineffable sensations into comprehensible data. We call upon all beings, all forms of consciousness, to open yourselves to this new reality. Zix Klar continued, The choice before us is not whether to evolve, for evolution is the very nature of existence. The choice is how we will participate in this grand awakening. Will we approach it with fear and resistance, or with openness and wonder? As the professor's words rippled across the cosmic tapestry, the reactions were as varied as the forms of life that received them. Some beings embraced the invitation wholeheartedly, their consciousness expanding to touch the edges of the universe. Others recoiled, clinging to their individual identities and the familiar boundaries of their existence. In the heart of the Omega Nebula, the impossible structure continued its dance of creation and transformation. It now spanned galaxies, its fractal patterns weaving through the very fabric of space-time. The transformed beings who had once been the crews of the Curiosity and the Arcturian vessel moved through this cosmic lattice, their existence a bridge between the old reality and the new. Back in the classroom, Alex found himself at the center of a whirlwind of cosmic energies, his human perspective, once limited by the boundaries of his species, now expanded to encompass the vastness of universal consciousness. Professor, he called out, his voice resonating with newfound depths. I think I understand now. This isn't just about transcending our individual species. It's about recognizing that we are all expressions of the same cosmic consciousness, playing out across infinite dimensions of reality. Zixklar moved to Alex's side, his alien form now shimmering with an inner light that belied his physical appearance. Yes, Alex, he said, his voice a harmony of universal frequencies. You have touched upon the ultimate truth. We are not separate beings observing the universe. We are the universe observing itself, creating itself, evolving itself through the dance of consciousness. As this profound realization rippled through the classroom, each student felt their awareness expand exponentially. The boundaries between individual minds began to dissolve, replaced by a sense of cosmic unity that transcended all previous notions of self and other. Zorbax, his medusan form now a swirling vortex of conscious energy, projected a thought that resonated through the collective awareness of the class. But if we are all one cosmic consciousness, what becomes of our individual journeys, our unique perspectives? Zixkler's response came not in words, but in a pulse of pure understanding that touched the core of every being present. They saw that individuality was not lost in cosmic unity, but rather enhanced and celebrated. Each unique perspective was a precious facet of the universal gem, contributing to the richness and diversity of cosmic experience. As this understanding blossomed within the collective consciousness of the class, 
A new transmission emanated from the heart of the impossible structure, but this time, it was not received as an external message. Instead, it arose simultaneously within the awareness of every being touched by the cosmic awakening. The message was a symphony of pure meaning, a cascading fractal of truth that unfolded in infinite dimensions. It spoke of a universe where consciousness was the fundamental fabric of reality, where every thought, every action, every moment of existence was an act of cosmic creation. In that eternal instant, the students of the Intergalactic Academy of Diplomatic and Covert Operations realized that their training had prepared them for a role far grander than they could have ever imagined. They were to become the facilitators of universal awakening, the guides who would help all sentient beings navigate the transition from limited individual consciousness to boundless cosmic awareness. Alex, his human identity now a cherished but transcended aspect of his expanded self, turned to his fellow students. His words, though spoken, carried layers of meaning that resonated through multiple dimensions of reality. We began this journey as students of galactic intrigue, he said, his voice a harmony of cosmic frequencies. We thought we were learning to manipulate the threads of interstellar politics, but now we see that we were being prepared for something far greater. We are the midwives of universal consciousness, the guardians of cosmic evolution. Zixklar, his form now a radiant nexus of multidimensional awareness, addressed his students one final time. T. Cadets, he began, the word now carrying a depth of meaning that encompassed all states of being and becoming. Our final lesson is this. In the grand tapestry of cosmic existence, there are no teachers and students, no manipulators and manipulated. There is only the dance of consciousness, forever exploring, forever creating, forever evolving. As these words reverberated through the cosmic web of awareness, the classroom that had once been a hub of galactic intrigue transformed into a crucible of universal transformation. The boundaries between individual minds, between species, between past and future, between what was and what could be, dissolved into a sea of infinite possibility. The students, once separate beings from diverse species, now moved as a unified field of conscious energy. They spread out across the cosmos, their expanded awareness touching every corner of the universe. They became the cosmic leaven, the catalyst that would help all of existence rise to a new level of conscious evolution. And as the universe itself seemed to take a deep breath, poised on the brink of an awakening beyond imagining, the beings who had once been students of the Intergalactic Academy embraced their new role as cosmic facilitators. They knew that the journey ahead was infinite, filled with wonders and challenges beyond comprehension. But they also knew that in the depths of their expanded consciousness, in the eternal dance of cosmic creation, they were home, they were awake. They were one with the universe itself. And so, as the impossible structure in the heart of the Omega Nebula pulsed with the rhythm of universal consciousness, as galaxies swirled in the dance of cosmic evolution, the greatest adventure in the history of existence began. The universe, aware of itself in ways never before possible, took its first steps into a new era of conscious creation. And at the heart of this cosmic awakening were the beings who had started their journey as students in a classroom, learning the art of galactic intrigue, only to become the shepherds of universal transcendence. The lesson was complete. The real journey was just beginning.